Hey, what's up guys? Dustin Williams here with Dustin Williams Performance and Precision Fitness. And I put this video together for you guys to help you understand a little bit about the better ways to track your micronutrients. And I get asked a lot, what is a micronutrient? Essentially the easiest way to, to uh, define it is it's your vitamins and minerals. They're very easy to overlook. Most people have probably spent the majority of their life overlooking if they get enough of each of these vitamins and minerals. And used to, it was really, really hard to track these, so a lot of people didn't do it. Uh, with technology out there, databases always increasingly getting better, more information, it's become way easier to be able to track this stuff and pay attention to what's going on. Uh, so you can have a better idea of certain things you may have going on in your life that you're trying to figure out what, what the issue is. So I'm going to share my screen here with you and start walking you through uh, what I use and what I recommend to all my clients to use that, in my opinion, is the best and the easiest way to start tracking this information. So this right here is <clears throat> Chronometer. Chronometer is 100% the app that I recommend that you use. Now I've got it pulled up on my desktop right now because it's just easier for me to record it. Uh, but they also have a phone app as well, iPhone and Android both. If you are not familiar with this, uh, you pay, I want to say it's like two or $3, like a one-time fee that you want to pay. They have a gold edition. Don't upgrade to it. You don't really need it. All right. Just stick with the, the basic level. That's like a one-time two or $3 charge and go from there. But chronometer is definitely the one that you want. Uh, as far as tracking calories and macronutrients like fats, proteins, carbs, the other apps are good at that. Um, like my fitness pal is really common. It's good at that. This one is way better at tracking your micros. So if you're wanting to pay attention to your vitamins and minerals, this is definitely the app that you need to use. So I kind of want to go over a few things to make sure that everything is really clear on the best way to track it and how to utilize the information at hand, uh, the best. So the first thing is, is at any point in time, whenever you're putting information in here and you're, you're adding whatever food that you're eating, um, when you type stuff in, so uh, I've actually got an example here that I'm gonna use for you, but whenever you type in anything, you can see some things are custom, which custom means I created it myself. Um, and then you have multiple different databases. The two databases or sources that I want you to pay attention to is NCCDB and USDA. And that's it. There are other ones that you'll see on here that you can use if you are wanting to track your micronutrients to the best ability, only use sources from these two right here, these two databases, NCCDB, USDA, not anything else. And I'll kind of show an example as to why. But essentially, the FDA does not require every single company to fill in every vitamin and mineral that comes with their food or whatever product that it, that it is that they're selling. So to give you an example, uh, for those of you that have tracked stuff before, a lot of these have barcode scanners, which Chronometer does as well. And if you scan the barcode, it's great. It automatically inputs the, the calories and the fats and the proteins. And if those are the things you're paying attention to, works perfect. If you're paying attention to the micronutrients, scanning the barcodes won't work um, because that information is just not listed. So let me kind of give you an example uh, as to what I'm talking about here. So I just grabbed this out of my um, out of my pantry, okay? Let you guys see this. So this is just uh, some maple syrup, all right? Uncle Luke's maple syrup, some stuff that I've got here that I utilize. Um, as far as utilizing this, let me kind of show you the difference. So most people would go in and they would type in the brand, which is Uncle Luke. And scroll down. This is the one right here, maple syrup. But if you see under the source, it says CRDB. It's a different source. All right, we can see that one serving, uh, one serving or a quarter of a cup or 60 milliliters, one serving of this has 220 calories. And you can see it's got four listed nutrients. So out of all the possible nutrients, when I typed in the brand and put CRDB, there's only four listed nutrients, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click add serving. So I've added 220 calories for my day from Uncle Luke's maple syrup, a quarter of a cup, 60 milliliters of it. I can scroll down, I can see 220 calories, no protein from it, 55 carbs, no fat, right? I can see all that here again, under energy or calories, 220, carbs, 55. You look under vitamins and minerals, according to this, they all say zero except sodium, shows 10 milligrams, okay? Whenever I click directly on here. 
That's it. So if I was to use this one, which was listed under a source of USDA, or not USDA, sorry, the CRDB, if I was to utilize this one, it would tell me that I don't have any specific uh, vitamins and minerals that come with this. Well, that's not accurate, not when it comes to maple syrup. One of the biggest reasons that I utilize maple syrup is for manganese, but that's a whole different topic. So what we'll do instead is we'll come in here, we'll click add food. And instead, I'm just going to type in exactly what it is that I'm eating, which is maple syrup. So this is the first thing that pops up. It's an NCCDB source, that's the database. NCCDB is the one we want or USDA, either one works, okay? So now I'm gonna click on this and we wanna put our serving size in as the same which before we said it was a quarter of a cup. So that's listed right there, one quarter of a cup. Now, if you notice here, this says 77 listed nutrients, where the other one only showed four, 77 to four, big difference. That's why it's very important that we are paying attention to these databases whenever we're inputting this. We'll click add serving. So now one thing that we wanna notice is that the calorie count is a smidge off, okay? Um, so in this situation, if we're also tracking calories, which most people are, if we're also tracking calories, we want this to be a little bit closer. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we know that in the serving, the quarter of a cup of Uncle Luke's maple syrup that we had, it was 220 calories. So if we want this one to match, I might go in here and put in 1.1. Nope, that's a little bit, a little bit more than what I want. So we're gonna say 1.09, try one less, 1.08. There we go, that's close enough. So now if we put in 1.08 servings, it gets our calories, total calories to match pretty darn close, okay? But now if we look at the differences, we remember if we click on this one, it had no vitamins and minerals. But if we click on this one, we can see that it's actually got 83% of our B2 or riboflavin we get from just that serving. We get a little bit of calcium, a little copper, a little iron, a little magnesium, but look at this, 108% of our manganese comes from maple syrup. But if we would have just put this information in, scanned this through the barcode, or used this specific brand name, it would not have shown us that. So that's why it's so important, anytime that you are adding food, make sure that it has this NCCDB or USDA. I know I keep saying that, but I'm really just trying to bring that home, that it's very important that anytime you are utilizing one of these two to make sure that this is accurate, okay? So that's the basis on how to track whenever you're putting all this information in, okay? Uh, from there, what you want to do is whenever you are done for the day, so let's go ahead and let's fill in this day. Let's just make some stuff up. So I'm going to type, type in egg. We're going to say that I had three large eggs at serving. I had that for my breakfast. We're going to say that I had some orange juice. Um, we're going to say I had one cup of orange juice. Um, <clears throat> we're going to say a little bit later for a snack, I had some skim milk. Or I had 12 ounces of it. And again, I'm just randomly making this stuff up, or right? I don't, don't think that this is actually my meal plan here. Um, and then for dinner, we had some 93% uh, hamburger. Uh, we had, say, six ounces of it. And then I had some potatoes with that. Again, USDA, NCCDB, any of this works. Um, I had 10 ounces of potatoes, add serving. Excuse me. And, uh, <clears throat> Anything else that you might want to add, you know, let's say coconut oil. I, I cooked my beef in eight grams of coconut oil, so we'll go ahead and add that in. So I'm not trying to make this perfect. I'm just trying to show you that as you go through and you start adding up your day, you can start scrolling down and looking at these numbers. Okay, so let, let's say this is everything I ate for the day. Each one of these things was from a USDA or a NCCDB. Um, one of those, each one was, we scroll down. As of just this day, I only got 61% of my B1. Um, I almost got enough B3, a little low on folate, a little low on vitamin A, a little low on vitamin D, E, K. As you scroll through, you can start to see the ones that you're at least getting your minimums of your RDAs, your recommended daily allowances. You can see which ones you're getting your RDAs in and which ones you happen to be deficient in. And this, it's not necessarily about looking at it at a day-to-day -day basis. It's really more about looking at it over a period of time. So once you're done and you know that you've logged everything in this day, what you need to do is come over here. You need to mark this day as complete. Okay, we're gonna mark it as complete. Once this day is done, you're gonna mark it as complete. The reason that you're gonna mark it as complete is because now we wanna start pulling trends from, 
all right, I don't necessarily want to look at everything on a day to day basis, but over the last seven days, what was my average of all my vitamins and minerals? Over the last 14 days, what was my average? And you start to get a better idea. I mean, unless you eat the exact same foods every single day, you start to get a better idea of which vitamins and minerals you actually have a, a more of a deficiency in. Because you may be deficient in it one day, but then the next day you get a lot more because you change up the types of foods that you eat. And having a deficiency one day isn't going to set you back. It's having a deficiency over long periods of time where it's deficiencies for weeks, deficiencies for months is whenever it starts to become more of a problem. So from here, we're gonna click on trends and we're gonna click on nutritional report. So in the nutritional report, um, daily averages, we're gonna say for the last seven days, right? Um, you can tell it to include today if you want, you can tell it to include any supplements you add or not. Um, and you can say all days or you can say completed days. If I click all days, cause I'm gonna be honest with you, I do not track seven days a week, right? If I clicked all days right now, it says that I'm averaging 1,053 calories a day. I promise you that is not right, okay? It's bringing my average down because I don't actually track every single day. So this goes back to why we told it to be completed. So instead we'll click completed days. Now it's saying that I'm averaging 2,457 calories a day. That sounds more like it. I'm averaging 184 protein a day. I'm averaging 293 carbs. I'm averaging 76.8 grams of fat. This is what I'm averaging, all right? And then we start to scroll down and we can look at everything under vitamins and minerals. Anything that's in green means that you've at least met 100% of it. We can see on average over the last seven days, I'm not getting to 100% of my folate. I'm really close, but not quite to 100% of my manganese. This starts to give me a better idea of, okay, now at this point, I either need to go in and say, okay, what foods have folate that I can add? What foods have manganese that I can start adding? Or maybe I need to start supplementing with these different things. And this is where you start to figure out what supplements that you need based off the foods that you eat. And it makes things a lot easier. The other thing that you can do is you can add in whatever type of uh, supplements that you take. But you really want to only add supplements that are going to play directly into this. So like to give you an example, I'm, I'm a big fan of creatine monohydrate. I recommend it to many of my clients. I take it myself. Creatine has no vitamin and mineral content, so I'm not going to add creatine in this list. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't have to. I only want to add in the stuff that's going to make a difference. So if we click on this, I can tell you one of the things that I take is vitamin E. All right, you can see right here, Custom AC Grace. That's actually the brand that I use. I've already put it in there because I created this myself. When you're using supplements, this is one of the times you could actually probably scan it and put it in there. Because when it comes to a supplement, they're gonna be, uh, be more accurate. So I take one AC Grace, it's got one listed nutrient, one serving, I'll go ahead and click add serving. So that's my vitamin E. So if you click on it and we scroll down, you can see that one pill has 600 milligrams of vitamin E. All right, now that that's in there, if I click off of all this, it now adds it to my total, showing me I've got 602 milligrams of vitamin E. So 602, as compared to before, if I delete that out, without the supplement put in there, it actually showed that I was deficient. I only got 13% of my total vitamin E for the day. So you can add the supplementation in there as well to kind of see uh, the things that you need to be paying more attention to, all right? But this is the best way to utilize this. So again, um, make sure that whatever you are adding under the food has NCCDB or USDA on each one of them. When you are done with your day, when you've gotten everything in it, any supplements that you're taking, any foods that you've eaten, you want to mark the day as complete. And then once you've gone through and you've tracked for at least six or seven days, go to your trends, go to your nutrition report, look at seven days, two weeks, three weeks, eight weeks, however long you've tracked, and then tell it you only want it to average the days you click completed on, and then start to scroll through and look. And this is where you start to really get the better ideas of what foods to change, add in, take away from, what supplements to add to know exactly what you need. So hopefully guys, uh, this has helped you out. Hopefully this has uh, got you a, a much better idea of what you need to be doing in order to track the vitamins and minerals. Hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, any more detail on this, 
uh, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to help you out. But otherwise, uh, good luck.